five. I've got a class action suit in Judge Daniel's court. You know how he is about punctuality. And decorum, and the dress of witnesses, and the temperature in the courtroom. <laughs> and I'm glad I don't have to deal with Flintfart Daniels. Andy? Don't raise your voice in my courtroom. I won't tolerate it. I apologize, Your Honor. It was not my intention. Have no patience with lawyers that don't do their homework and expect the courts to delay justice. Your motion for a continuance denied. Court stands adjourned. Judge Daniels, you're scheduled to hear the class action motion. Public lobby versus Farnham Lobby. Reschedule it. Oh, Jay. Barry. Where is everybody? Flint Hart adjourned the court. Luther. Why wasn't I notified? Because I didn't know. He got a note. Must have been something that really shook him up. He adjourned and took off. I'll advise the defendant's attorney the judge will hear it tomorrow. Now, tomorrow will be too late. I've got to see the judge today. Well, he's on his way to San Pedro. His daughter's leaving on a cruise on the um, island princess. Consider a divorce. Dad, Sam told me just last night he wanted a chance to prove that we could still make it together. Well, I just had another battle with him. And I assure you that the sea air is not going to make Sam Ballister turn over a new leaf. Uh, pardon me, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Mason, you're not going on this cruise, are you? No, no, I, uh, <laughs> I came to see you. Well, this is no time to see me. Allow me. Sorry, uh, Perry Mason, my daughter Ellen Ballister. Mrs. Ballister? Mr. Mason. Judge, I hate to break in on you like this, but I do need about five minutes of your time. Well, if it's a legal matter, I'll see you in court tomorrow. Ellen? Hey, Tom. Tom Heater. <laughs> How are you? Well, I haven't made my first million yet, but I'm uh, working on it. What are, you, what are you doing here? A little vacation? Huh? No, no. I had an urgent legal matter to discuss with Judge Foster Daniels, but he's not listening today. Oh, oh he gave you a hard time. Oh, the good judge gave me no time at all. Did you know that I was with his law firm before he was appointed to the bench? Yeah, that's right. I remember. And as a matter of fact, I'm associated with his son-in-law now. So you tell me your problem. I'll talk to the good judge for you, and he won't give me the brush off, okay? <laughs> Is that another bon voyage gift for me? No, this is for Sam. Sam? Yeah, in case I couldn't persuade you not to take him along. You know how he wolfs down the candy. Whenever he's on the wagon, I figured this would be a peace offering and a reminder to stay dry. Ellen? Hi, Susie. Hi, love. Here's the medical kit I promised you, and it's already filled. You know my father? Yes, hello. Hello. You're an angel. You want me to bring it to your stateroom for you? Hey, would you put this in there, too? I was so damn mad at Sam, I forgot to give it to him. It's candy. Dad thinks he'll need it to stay dry. Just a minute. medical kit, and this is for you from Judge Daniels. Oh. 
Candy. From old Flintheart. You know, this is going to be a day I'm going to remember. Susan, I want to talk to you. Sam, why don't you just drop dead? Good for you. Is there anything I could do? Well, if you were Sir Galahad, you could destroy the evil knight for me. Oh. Well, look, I usually try to schedule all my brave deeds for the weekend. It's Thursday, my armor's at the cleaner, the horse is at the vets. I don't know what I can do. Thanks. Mason's got influence in Sacramento. Hey, Matt North, mes amis, everybody, name your voice. Scotch on the rocks, please, Tom. You got it, Judge, you got it. Tom tells me you've got a problem. I'm Judge Daniels. Uh, excuse me, business. Mr. Mason, it's been very nice talking to you. My pleasure, Mrs. Thomas. Thank you. Judge, you've been hearing the Farnham class action suit. My clients want to preserve one of those old buildings for an historical shrine. But why all the urgency? Now, tomorrow morning, the bulldozers are scheduled to move in and destroy all the buildings. I'd hope you'd issue a temporary restraining order. Okay, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go... Yeah, Judge. Thanks, Tom. I'll go this far. You'll be at my house tonight at 8.30 with counsel, and I'll hear your argument. Well, thanks, Judge. We'll be there. There you go. Fine, fine. Thanks, Tom. Oh, you're kidding me. Right. Pleasure. This, uh, this is yours, Mrs. No, no thanks. I've got some calls to make. No, wait. I want you to stick around, hang around until we toast the travelers. Okay, now I'll let you go then. All right. Young man, this is yours. This is for your beautiful bride here. And this special is for a guest of honor, a non-alcoholic, uh, old fashioned. <laughs> non-alcoholic? Uh. <laughs> Tom, even with the bitters, I can taste the alcohol in it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's to a happy voyage. Sam, you promised. Now, I promised not to have a drink after the ship sailed. And I meant it. Ah. <laughs> uh. Now I'm off the boobs. Fantastic. You know, I'm going to eat so much candy on this trip, I'm going to weigh 400 pounds. <laughs> Attention, all passengers. Attention, all passengers. The chief engineer has announced, due to mechanical difficulty, there will be a delay in sailing. However, all guests are requested to disembark at this time. All guests should proceed ashore. You will be advised of sailing time as soon as possible. Attention all passengers. Attention all passengers. The time is now 1800 hours. Projected sailing time now estimated at midnight. Mr. Ho. 
Holbrook's clients have spent $8 million to acquire the property, they have the right to develop it. Your Honor, holding up the demolition crews for one more day will not materially damage Mr. Holbrook's clients. On the other hand, if you don't restrain them, the damage to the people will be irreparable. Mason, it's late. I've had a hard day. The law is perfectly clear. I cannot grant the order. I hope you understand. Well, Judge, I hope you understand that I can't accept that decision. I'll have to seek relief in the Court of Appeal. Help yourself. Thank you, Your Honor. Judge Foster Daniels? Yes. I'm Lieutenant Arthur Tragg, LAPD. This is Sergeant Napier. May we come in? What's the problem? Can't wait till morning. Well, Your Honor, um, um, come into my study. Sit down. If you don't mind, we'd rather not. Uh, Your Honor, you see, we... Uh, what is it, Lieutenant? You got something to say? Out with it. It's about your son-in-law, Mr. Sam Ballister. Oh. Well, what trouble is Sam in now? He's dead. Oh, my God. What happened? An accident? No, sir, it wasn't an accident. He was poisoned. Daughter, I... She's all right. She's in the hospital. She's expected to recover. Expected to recover? From what? Well, you see, sir, your son-in-law was... Would you drive me to just, her? Just a moment. I'm here to arrest you for the murder of Mr. Sam Ballister. What kind of a lunatic? Now, before you say anything, I'm required to advise you of your rights. Now, you I know, know my rights. rights. Did you kill him? Well, if that's what you think, I wasted my one call on a damn fool. Well, then you wasted your call. Because until you tell me differently, Judge, I have to think what the police think. Now, I've read the arrest report. And for the better part of this long, long day, I've been with you. I just a minute. No, you listen to the facts. You rushed out of your courtroom this afternoon without even advising counsel. You were obviously in a very big hurry to get to that ship. But you still took time to stop off to buy a box of candy. But not for your daughter for your son-in-law. And if that's not strange enough, it's common knowledge that you hated Sam. You made no secret of it. I'm not A few to... hours later, Sam Ballister's dead, a poison. And the police lab report shows that your candy was loaded with the lethal drug. Any first-year law student would tell you that's circumstantial evidence. I'll see that you get another call. Do a first-year law student. Now sit down. I've decided on you. But I haven't decided on you. And I'm not going to until you climb down off that bench and face up to your situation. You're in jail. You're not a judge here. You're an accused murderer. You don't give orders. You take them. Now, once more, did you kill Sam Ballister? No, I didn't. If I had murdered Sam, I wouldn't have bothered to call. I'd have pleaded myself guilty and gotten it over with. You know, I can really believe you'd do just that. You see, I'm stuck with the old proverb. He who's his own lawyer has a fool for a client. There'll be times, I'm sure, when I'll ask you to remember that. Okay, when I need to do it. Now, first thing in the morning, I want you to get in touch with my daughter. Judge. And remember the proverb. Good night. Oh, by the way, you were wrong about that restraining order. I'm sorry I had to rule against you. It's all right. The Court of Appeal issued a writ. They overruled you. I've put back your two meetings till this afternoon, Perry. And, uh, Hamilton Berger's office has called and confirmed your appointment, all right? That's fine, Della. I'll go there directly from the hospital after I've talked to Ellen Ballister. 
Paul Drake's here. Oh. Good. So my people have been checking out Sam Ballister's background, and so far I've got to tell you everything, and the police report's right on the nose. Hmm. Any specifics on the poison? Yeah, it's an exotic type. Very slow acting, very lethal. The peculiar part about it is it deteriorates in the bloodstream. And after a few hours, it's chemically undetectable. Oh, well, that's interesting. Why is it interesting? Because it means that the ship had sailed on schedule. If Sam Ballister had died at sea, his murder would have probably gone undetected. Tell me Mrs. Ballister's room number, please. Never mind. Here she is now. Well, it's good to see you looking so well. Thank you. You probably heard I'm representing your father. I know. Hi. Hello. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you two meet at the Bon Voyage party? Yes. Sir Galahad. You still having problems with the evil knight? No. No, not anymore. What's going on? We had a brief encounter aboard ship. <laughs> Listen, I, I suppose you two have things to talk about, and I've got to go back to the Institute. So I'll run and get my things. Thanks for coming. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Where are you going? Ah, uh, the roof garden. I was doing perfectly all right this morning. Do you know how doctors are? <laughs> Taking precautions. Helen, I'm going to need your help. Your father tells me you two are very close. We were. But I got married and... Sam took his little girl away from him. And my father hated him for that. Was that the only reason your father didn't get along with Sam? Mr. Mason, Foster Daniels is the great pontificator. The self-appointing flashing sword of justice. Didn't you know that? What about Sam? <sighs> Sam was an operator, a, a political fixer, an opportunist, not a very good lawyer. But I knew all that when I married him. And I loved him anyway. I learned to cope with that at Erewhon. Erewhon? Erewhon Institute. I went there for psychiatric treatment after my, uh, my baby died. Ellen, your father brought the candy for Sam. If he poisoned it, how could he do that and not risk poisoning you? My father knows I have a diabetic condition and can't eat candy. Yes, but obviously you did eat the candy. One of those unfortunate coincidences. Susan, the nurse who called you Galahad, she brought a fresh supply of insulin to the ship. I must have taken a little too much. When I felt the symptoms, hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. You took the antidote. Two pieces of my father's candy. Ellen, correct me if I'm wrong. But I get the impression you believe your father killed your husband. Mr. Mason. Mr. Mason, could we have a moment? Have you been visiting the widow? I've called on my client's daughter to keep her informed so she can help in her father's defense. Will you plead the judge guilty? Mr. Mason, everybody knows that the judge and his son-in-law didn't get along. Isn't the evidence pretty overwhelming? Well, if it is, Ed, then you know much more about this case than I do. Is it true that she won't testify Excuse against... Excuse me, gentlemen. I can make Please, no further statements. Excuse me. Don't worry. Yes, Dell, I'm on my way to Berger's office now. Why did he cancel the appointment? No, I just didn't want you barging through all those reporters and TV newsmen at my place. 
There was a regiment there. All waiting, looking for something, anything. Perry, you got some soda, two cents plain, maybe? My stomach is killing me. Hamilton, don't you think it's a little close to election time for you to be avoiding reporters? Tell me something. Do you really think you have a case? You made an arrest? You got the whole state in an uproar. You know, there's not even enough to get him bound over for trial. Thanks. You're fishing, Perry. Oh, no. You're the one with the sour stomach. Your whole case is circumstantial. That box of candy in the stateroom. There are dozens of people in and out. Yes, but they didn't have the judge's motive. If all the people who hated Sam Ballister were lined up, they'd reach to the moon. <laughs> you know, I can tell that you don't know what I know. And uh, I'm going to keep it that way. Would you like some more soda? No, I feel better already. <laughs> really? Mm. Well, I hate to aggravate your ulcer, Sir Hamilton. But I do know what you know. Now, don't snow me, Perry. I talked to Ballister's wife. She told me. And knowing this, you don't want to tell the judge to get himself another attorney. Why should I? I don't believe it. But you were involved in the class action suit. You know he postponed the hearing at the last minute, and then he turned down your request for a restraining order. That proves nothing. It proves that Sam Ballister took a $100,000 bribe to influence the judge to keep you from stopping that demolition. And when the judge heard about it, he blew his stack, knocked off his son-in-law. And as district attorney, I'm going to prove that to the jury. That's preposterous. Anybody that knows me or my record would never believe for an instant that I could be influenced by Sam or anybody else. You've got to get it through your head that while you're in here facing a murder charge, you're not a superior court judge. The only way to refute the charges against you is by dealing with facts. There's only one fact. Until you started blazing away at me, I knew nothing about Sam's $100,000 payoff by the Farnham people. But you did hear from Tom Heater that Sam had been doing some influence peddling by using your name. And when I found out, I could have killed him. Exactly. Which is precisely the point the district attorney made. Only Berger didn't say you could have killed him. He said you did. Motive. And opportunity and several witnesses to the fact that you brought the box of poison candy. I picked up the box in the shop. I had it gift wrapped. I never opened it. I handed it over to Miss Oriel, Ellen's nurse at the Erewhon Institute. Just that way. Imaginations, cleanse your brains, let your thoughts run freely. Just concentrate on your breathing going in and out. And now, without opening your eyes, turn and face your neighbor and reach out and touch each other's face lovingly and gently. Just the face, Mr. Denzel. And communicate through each other's essence. Oh, Mr. Heater recommended Erewhon to me, I guess. I guess it's because he was so impressed with what you were able to do with Ellen Ballister. Oh, yes. Poor Ellen. She was in terrible condition. She lost her only child in the fire, and subconsciously she blamed her husband for it. Well, why? Well, he was drunk, and he fell asleep with a lit cigarette. You know, one weekend is hardly enough time to know what Erwan can do for you. <laughs> I know, I know, but, um, 
luckily for me, my, my kinks are just little ones. <laughs> Easily straightened. Oh. Thank you. What is this? It's part of the Air One way. It's a special nerve and mind tonic. It's called an Air One elixir. That stuff is terrible. Mm -hmm. Like so many things that are good for us. Go ahead and drink it. Hey, Fitz. It's a war, I tell you. All out war. Hot war. Nothing cold about it. Me and them Erewhon nuts. What seems to be the problem? They don't believe in killing anything. So what happens? I know more and get my place clean, and their plant lice come crawling down here all over my plants. Well, I really hate to interrupt your war, Mr. Harmon, but uh, you think you could take a couple of seconds out to answer a question for me? I understand that... Uh, most of the Erewhon visitors and family stay here with you, is that right? Yeah. Well, their kinfolks are all up there running around making oom noises and skinny dipping. Listen, I want you to take a look at this man and tell me when he was registered here last. Never registered. Wait a minute. You sure about that? I've got a photographic memory. I said he never registered. That don't mean I didn't recognize him or that he had never been here. Quite a few times. Most every weekend. But when he was here, he was with someone who was registered. Now, this is his wife. What about her? Nope. Never. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She's the one who always registered. And this is the guy that always met her here. Receptions let me through, but if you're tied up... I... No, 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 it's all right. No, we just, uh... Just go to my office here. But What, you got a tax audit? If that's all it was, boy. I tell you, Perry Sam's death coming just at this time. It's the nearest thing to disaster, man. Sam's murder brought that on? Well, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those things, Perry. How about a drink? No, thanks. It's too early. I want to have one. Hindsight is, uh... Hindsight's so much better, right? I mean, I should have taken more interest in Sam's political wheeler dealings. I mean, the fundraising, the arm twisting, all that stuff. But when you have a son-in-law of a prominent judge, you just you just tend to overlook, you know. Do you think the firm and you were involved? Well, maybe not legally. Uh, I, but I have a moral obligation, that's all. On the ship that day, I, uh, I had a... Well, I call it a premonition. I mean, I got the idea that Sam was going to take off for good, not just vacation, you see. So I came right back here, and I dug out all the books, and it's even worse than I'd imagine. Wow. Sam manipulated the books? Yeah, he, uh, well, he, he used them, you know, trusts particularly, to hide campaign funds. You're busy. No, no problem. I'm just leaving. It's good to see you up and around. Thank you. Ellen. It's been a long time. Your father asked about you. Tell him. Tell him I'm well. Yes, Ellen. Did you hear from Paul? Uh-huh. He's back from his session at Erewhon. I don't know how productive it was, but uh, it was good for laughs. I'll get it firsthand. Ask Paul to meet me in my apartment tonight at 8, and have you bring along four boxes of candy, identical to the one the judge took to that Bon Voyage party. Barry. 
All right, Paul. You brought the candy, good. Yeah. Open the box. Hey, how come, how come all this mad scientist routine? I know you're whipping up an early batch of Christmas cheer. Yes, indeed. Peter. Uh, he's in big trouble. Losing a partner. His fares are all snarled. Well, that's the trouble with partnerships. I wonder how that leaves Ellen Ballester. You better check into Sam's insurance, Paul. Taste anything like that before? Well, it um, it has a distinctive flavor of um, old tennis shoes steeped in vinegar. Uh, you have tasted it before? Only once. See, they give it to you every afternoon at the Erewhon Institute. They call it Erewhon Elixir. Then this is the murder weapon. Well, in effect, yes. Would you pass this along, please? And don't get any of the chocolate on your hands. I don't understand why Ellen well, hasn't even written. In the course of your investigation, did you learn any more about uh, this, this murder weapon? I was present when laboratory tests were made, which showed that the candy had been impregnated with a lethal dose of strauchelin. Strauchelin? What is strauchelin? Aren't you going to object? He's not exactly an expert witness. So they call the toxicologist and the pathologist, and they say exactly the same thing. What have we accomplished? I learned that if strauchelin is ingested in lethal quantity, it induces violent heart seizure and death. Which, according to the medical examiner's testimony, is exactly what happened. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lieutenant. Your witness, Mr. Mace. Your Honor. Lieutenant Drag, you don't expect me to fall to the floor with heart seizure, do you? No, Counselor. Lieutenant, isn't it a fact that strauchelin differs from similar alkaloid poisons in that it is extremely slow acting and that it breaks down only four to five hours after preparation? Objection, Your Honor. Lieutenant Drag is not qualified to answer that. Your Honor, if Lieutenant Drag is qualified to answer the district attorney's questions on the subject, Surely Mr. Berger can have no objection to his answering mine. Objection overruled. Witness may answer. Strauchelin is slow acting, it does dissipate, and is no longer chemically detectable. And is no longer lethal. That is right. Thank you, Lieutenant. No redirect, Your Honor. I admire your theatricality and your expertise. But what has it got to do with our case? Your Honor, the people call Mr. Thomas Heater. Yes, sir, I did. Uh, I, I did send that note to Judge Daniels in his courtroom. I had information that Sam, that Sam Ballister had solicited uh, a bribe amounting to $100,000, claiming he could influence the judge uh, on some important litigation. Did you see the defendant after you sent him a note? Yes, sir, I did. He came to the Bon Voyage party on the boat. Did the defendant discuss his son-in-law with you? Well, you have to understand that he was... Uh, he told me he was upset uh, because it could ruin his uh, chances for uh, appointment to the Court of Appeal. And did he say anything else? Uh, yeah, he said that... Uh, well, all the things that... 
Everyone knew about Sam, uh, like Sam's drinking. What else did he say? Well, he said if any man needed killing, it was Sam Ballister. Through the witness. Mr. Mason? No cross, Your Honor. Mr. Berger, call your next witness. What the devil are you doing? That hurt us. I'll call Tom back when he can help us. Your Honor, the people call Miss Susan Oreo. On his first visit, the judge wanted to know about the tonic that we give our patients, the Arowan elixir. He wanted to know specifically what went into the tonic, and I told him basically a lot of water and a little stralkalin. And then what did he do? He said, didn't we know that stralkalin was a deadly alkaloid poison? And I said, not in the tiny amount we use. We use it as a body and nerve tonic. Uh, like, well, for example, strychnia. Then Judge Daniels was familiar with the name Stralklin. Oh, not just the name. He, he knew a lot more about it than I did. Thank you. Your witness, Mr. Mason. Miss Oriel, who is in charge of the preparation, the actual mixing of the Erlewan elixir? I am. I see. Now, as Mrs. Ballas's nurse, were you familiar with her other visitors at the Institute, as well as her father? Yes, of course. In some cases, more than familiar? I don't know what you mean by that. Ms. Oriel, didn't you tell the district attorney that you live at Erewhon? Yes, part of my job. I have an apartment there. Then would you please tell the court why you registered so often at the motel directly down the hill from the Institute? Uh, I, uh... It was uh, a place to meet someone. Who was that someone? A friend. The evil knight? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about the man who visited his wife, but stayed with you. Who was he? He... he it was... <clears throat> Sam Ballister. Through with the witness, Your Honor. No redirect, Your Honor. The witness may step down. Your Honor, the people rest. Mr. Mason, are you ready to proceed with the defense? Put me on the stand. We've argued this for weeks now. I don't want you on the stand. Berger would have a fear that I've gone along with you and everything else. Now I'm insisting. People know my reputation, they'll believe me. We're waiting, Mr. Mason. You're wrong. Put me on the stand. Your Honor, the defense calls Judge Foster Daniels. Judge Daniels, I will ask you one question, and one only. Did you poison your son-in-law? I certainly did not, and moreover, I'd like to state... That's all. You've answered the question. But... Your Honor, I'm through with this witness. Mr. Berger, do you care to cross-examine? Yes, Your Honor, I think I will. Now, Judge, uh, I mean, Mr. Daniels, we've heard testimony that you uh, express interest in poisons. Is that correct? I suppose, but you must understand that... No, just answer the question. Yes. Now then, in that connection, I believe that you were on the bench to try what the press referred to as the Easter Bunny case. Will you tell us something about that? Well, um, it involved the smuggling of heroin. Uh, the smugglers filled hollow chocolate Easter rabbits with heroin. I see. They would fill hollow chocolate Easter rabbits with heroin. How? With hypodermic needles. Then they used hypodermic needles like these from an insulin kit to inject poison into candy. Is that correct? I'm finished with the witness. Defendant may step down. Your Honor, 
Sorry, may we have a moment? Thank you. Did you have any trouble? I had to go the way to Erewhon to get it. Yeah, you were right. Take a look at Sam Ballister's insurance policy. Your Honor, the defense calls Mrs. Ellen Ballister. Then in view of her testimony in the people's case, we request that she be designated a hostile witness. Your Honor, we object to that designation. Mrs. Ballister is the daughter of the defendant. I'm going to tell the truth, no matter whom it hurts. Just as my father taught me. Now, if that makes me a, a hostile witness, then I guess I am. Please, Mrs. Ballister, you're not testifying yet. Those comments will be stricken. The witness is still under oath. Motion granted. Defense may ask leading questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Ballister, immediately upon your discharge from Erewhon Institute, you had a reconciliation with your husband, the man you felt caused the death of your child. Isn't that correct? Yes. During the time you were at Erewhon, did you receive daily doses of the Erewhon elixir containing minute quantities of strophalin? the deadly poison from which your husband died. From what I've heard in court, I believe it's the same poison that was in the candy, yes? In an assortment of chocolates, identical to this one? As near as I can remember. Mrs. Ballister, would you please tell the court how it was that you, with a diabetic condition, came to eat some of this candy? The insulin was too strong. I felt Faint, giddy. I needed something sweet. Which pieces did you eat? This large cream? Oh, uh, I think I had that one first. Would you take it, please? Now, would you taste it just to be sure? There's no mistake. What's the matter, Mrs. Ballister? Well, it's terrible. I agree. As bad as the one I tasted. The candy in this box has been coated with faint, safe drops of strautlin. The potency has long since dissipated. But the bitter, acrid taste remains. Yet you testify that you ate not one, but two pieces of that candy. How could you do that without knowing that something was wrong? Uh, I don't... Uh... No, how? All right, you testified your husband ate a whole handful of that bitter-tasting candy, enough to kill him, without tasting the poison. Now, how could he do that? I hadn't thought. Uh, Sam liked uh, bitter sweets, uh, bitter drinks. Sure, Ellen's uh, right about that. Uh, Sam Ballister did like bitter old-fashioned lump. I, uh, I used to kid him about that. <laughs> and that's why at the Bon Voyage party, you brought along ready-mixed old-fashions. Yes. But Sam Ballister's old-fashioned was mixed not with bitters, but with fresh strauchlin. Huh? In lethal quantity. Someone put the poison in Sam Ballister's drink. In his drink? I don't, I don't understand that. You mean someone at the party? No, wait, wait. Wait, it's possible. I mean, uh, that's how Ellen... Yeah, she tasted Sam's drink, I remember. She didn't want him to have any alcohol, so she, she tasted the... Tasted. Mr. Mason, now, if, as you suggest, the decedent received the fatal dose in the old-fashioned, why did the killer poison the chocolates? Yeah. Because something happened that the killer hadn't counted on. That ship didn't sail on schedule. Isn't that correct, Mr. Heater? That's right, yeah. The killer expected Sam to be at sea when he'd have what would appear to be a heart attack. The ship would have returned to port. And by that time, all traces of the Strachan would have disappeared. And Sam Ballas's death would have been recorded as resulting from natural causes. So when the killer learned the ship wouldn't sail on time and knew that Ballister would die in port and the Strachan poisoning would be discovered, the killer used one of the hypodermic needles from this insulin kit and injected the remaining strophalin into the candy. 
to throw suspicion onto someone else. But Mr. and Mrs. Ballister ate that candy. It had not yet been touched by the killer. Isn't that correct, Mr. Heater? Yeah, that sounds reasonable uh, to me, but I'm hardly, hardly an expert. You know? Oh, I think you qualify, Tom. Because you killed Sam Ballister. What, what, are you, what are you saying, Perry? I mean, Sam left me with... I mean, man, he left me with financial chaos. I mean, Sam's death was a, it was a calamity, a complete calamity for me, a disaster. No. Your partner's murder was your only solution. Sam was responsible for that chaos. Suddenly he was leaving the country, leaving you to face it alone. That's a lie! Tom, you're the beneficiary of this partnership insurance on Sam Ballister. This policy solved your problem. You had access to the poison at Aero One. You had your opportunity at the Bon Voyage party. You had Sam's taste for bitter old fashions. And you poisoned him. Sam poisoned everything. Everything. Everybody he came in contact with. I can't even regret I killed him. Mr. Heater, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. You have the right to speak to an attorney, to have an attorney present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be appointed for you without charge. fault in your handling of the case. Well, thank you. Speaking objectively, though, you did commit one grave error. Yes? You should never have permitted the defendant to take the stand. 